Today, I'm going to be showing you one of the fastest ways that you can build an AI agent around data that you already have. Now on this channel, I show you everything from building AI agents from scratch, where we actually write it in Python code. I've showed you some higher level tools. And today I'm going to show you this free and open source tool called MindsDB. Now effectively, what this allows you to do is to connect to a ton of different data sources, unify them together, and then generate agents and I get responses from your data. I'll show you some demos, I'll show you how to set it up, but it's free, open source, very easy to use. And for those of you that just want answers about your data as quickly as possible, and you don't want to go in there and write all of the code manually, this is one of the best tools that you can use. So with that said, let's get into the video and let me show you how to set up this tool and explain where it's actually beneficial. So I'm just in the documentation here and we'll go over a few important concepts and then I'll dive in and actually show you how to set this up and how to create an agent around your data. Now MindsDB is actually a long Long term partner of mine. They have sponsored this video, but they've done a few others on the channel as well. And you guys always gave good feedback about the tool, which is why we're doing this again. Okay, so MindsDB, essentially what it lets you do is connect to a ton of different data sources. So whether it's a SQL database, whether it's even like a website, for example, you can actually scrape websites, whether it's something like Slack, MongoDB, structured or unstructured data, you can connect it inside of MindsDB. So that alone is useful, and that's kind of the first stage of their philosophy here, you know, connect to multiple different data sources in one place. Then the next is to unify this data. So a lot of times we have data from different sources and we want to be able to combine that data together so that we can actually use it to get more actionable insights. And then of course respond. So in this case, we're going to be creating a simple AI agent that can take our data source and then actually respond to queries and it can use multiple data sources in one. And again, it's just very quick to do this. And what we effectively are going to do here is write SQL queries that will run all of these operations. So it's not a completely no code tool, but it's a lot simpler than if you were going to write something completely from scratch using like Langchain or LangGraph, etc. Okay, so with that said, let me show you how to set this up on your computer. Again, remember this is free and open source. So the easiest way to install this is to use something called Docker Desktop, okay? I assume most of you already have this on your computer. If you don't, you can just download Docker Desktop. Now, once you've downloaded Docker Desktop, I'm gonna link this page in the description, which is the install guide. We're just gonna open it up. So let's go to Docker Desktop here, and we're gonna to go to the extensions tab. From extensions, we're going to press here and we're going to browse for the MindsDB extension. Okay, so you can just go here, find MindsDB, press install, and then that's literally it. This will take a second, it will download, it will install, it will run up, and then you can use this from your computer whether you're on Mac, Linux, or Windows. All right, so once it's installed, you can press open or just from the extensions tab here, you can press open like this. And it will actually just open the tool directly inside of Docker for you. So let's just go through this basic setup here and then I'll show you another way that you can open this as well, which I actually prefer. Okay, so in order to get started here, we have to configure a default AI model. Now you can use any of these models, so you can use one from Google, OpenAI, etc. In my case, I'm going to go with OpenAI, I'm going to use GPT 4.1, and then what I need to do is take my API key from OpenAI and paste it here. Again, you can pick whatever model you want and then put the appropriate API key. So let me get that and I'll be right back. All right, so I just went to platform.openai.com slash API keys. This is where you can generate one if you want to use GPT. And then I'm just going to paste that key here and go save and continue. Okay, now it's going to run us through a little bit of a tutorial here. I'm going to show you how this works anyways. But what you can do if you want to mess with this is you can copy this data source right here. And then you can just put this directly into MindsDB and connect to this database. So we'll go with connect and continue for right now. And again, it's going to start showing us kind of how this works. So this is the syntax to create an agent for example, create an agent, you can connect it to this data. And then that's literally it, right? And now you have an agent that just automatically has a rag built in. And then you can query the agent, which I'll show you how to do not just from MindsDB, but also connecting to it directly from Python code at the end of this video. Okay, so there we go. And boom, now we have the ability to ask a question. So we could go here and say, what are the highest selling products? just because it's connecting us to this like really simple sales database for the demo. But of course, I'm gonna show you how to make this more custom in just one sec. Okay, and you can see here that it gave us a response. Now, apparently my query doesn't really make sense in this data. And then on the side here, you can see kind of all of the thoughts that the agent went through and how it actually was figuring out to give me this reply. 
Okay, so that's cool and all, but I just want to open this up in my browser now because I find the UI looks a little bit better in the browser and then I can zoom it in so you guys can see it a bit easier. So in order to do that, you can actually just open up your browser and you can go to this port. So localhost port 47334 because this is running locally on your own computer via Docker. When you go here, as you can see, it will just automatically open this up for you and then we can start working just in the browser. And I find this UI view is just a little bit nicer. So it gives you kind of some sample data here we're not going to use this for right now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a new kind of script here. So untitled one I can double press it if I want to rename that and we'll start working inside of here. And I'm going to start by showing you how to connect some data sources. Then we'll unify them. Then we'll create the agent, etc. So in order to connect to a data source, you could press this button right here and you can just see a bunch of different data sources that you can connect to. They have a ton of different options, both structured and unstructured. But in my case, I want to show you something a little bit unique where we write some basic SQL code to actually treat a website like a data source. So to give you an example of what I mean here, let's say we have a web page like this, okay, has information about like what a staging environment is and, you know, some programming related terms, some things that maybe our agent would know, but maybe we want to just give it a web page so it has some additional context. Now, the way that we could actually connect that in MindsDB is by using some of the following syntax. Now, I'm just going to copy it in. I'm not going to, um, what do you call it, write it line by line. So let me just pull it from my other monitor here just to save us a little bit of time. So what I can do is I can actually make a database called a web crawler with an engine equal to web. Now, if you're wondering how you get all of the syntax it's all available from the documentation, then what I can do obviously is just run this and then you'll see that it gets created in the bottom side here. Now that we have this database, it's empty, but we can actually use it to crawl a web page. So the next piece of syntax that we would need to write is the following. So it's this right here. We're going to create a new view called environments. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select everything from a web crawler, which we just created dot crawler, where the URL is equal to this. And then we just put the URL of the page that we want to scrape. And then we can specify a crawl depth. Now the depth will indicate how many URLs it's going to go deep when scraping this page. So if it finds another link, for example, on this page, and we have the crawl depth equal to one, then it would go and explore that link as well. And then from that link, if we have the crawl left to, uh, depth of two, sorry, it would go and explore that link. So when you make the depth higher, it's going to explore more and more pages that are linked to the original website. So if you wanted to crawl like the entire site, for example, you could put a crawl depth of four or five, and then it's recursively going to crawl through all of the pages that it discovers as it's crawling the website. But for now, what we'll do is we'll highlight this and then we'll just press on run. If you just want to run one command, then just highlight the command in the editor. If you just don't have anything highlighted, it will run everything. So if I highlight this and press run, it's now ran that. And then you'll see that it's created a view for us. So if we go to views in our MindsDB project, we have this environment view. And then if I press on the view, it just by default gives me kind of like a sample view here. And you can see as we scroll down, it has a bunch of text content, which is all of the content that it's scraped from this site. So right now we just created a simple database where we scraped a single URL and then we grabbed all of the text content. So now we have this view environments and then we can move on to the next step. All right, so we've got the data, but the next thing we want to do is actually turn this into a knowledge base. Now a knowledge base is essentially a vectorized database where it automatically chunks and embeds the different text content that comes from our data. So this is the part that's typically difficult to do if you're writing your own code from scratch because you need to set up an embedding model and then you need to do all of this chunking and all of this stuff. MindsDB essentially handles all of this for you out of the box by just using again some of this SQL syntax. So what we can do is we can now take this environment view, we can turn it into a knowledge base and that knowledge base is then something that the AI agent can use. So what I'm going to do again is just copy in some syntax here and show you how this works. So these are comments, by the way, if you want to remove the comments, you can just highlight this and hit control slash on your keyboard. So what I'm doing is I'm saying create knowledge base. I'm going to call this the environment KB standing for knowledge base using and then I'm having my metadata column be equal to the URL because I'm going to pull this from my environments and then I'm going to have my content columns being equal to the text content. Now right now I'm just setting up the knowledge base. I haven't populated it with anything yet, but this will create a vector enabled database for me where I then can insert the data and it will get automatically vectorized. If you don't know what that means, essentially we need to turn our data into vectors so that it can really quickly be looked up in something called a RAG pipeline, retrieval augmented generation, which is what this can 
command allows you to do. So if I copy this, I can go run, all right, and just wait a second and it should initialize this knowledge base and then we can add all of the content inside of it. All right, so now the knowledge base is created. We can see it from here. And then if we want, we can run the command describe knowledge base. And if we describe this, you'll see that we get all the information about it. So it shows us the storage. It's using Chroma DB in the background, the metadata columns, the content columns, ID columns, parameters, etc., and all of this other stuff that we need for the embedding. Okay. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to insert into the knowledge base. So I'm going to show you this right here. We can say into insert into, sorry, the environment KB. We can select the URL and the text content from our environments view. So again, this is just like kind of a standard SQL query, just slightly adjusted for MindsDB. And when I run this here, it's gonna take a second because I has to take all of this content, vectorize it, and then add to the database. Okay, and you can see actually that ran extremely fast. Okay, and now that it's inserted, if we wanna check our uh, knowledge base, we can go select asterisk from the environment knowledge base. And if we come here, you'll see that we get the ID, the chunk ID, the chunked content, the metadata, and then all of the relevance and the distance, which we don't really have right now because we haven't searched anything. And as you scroll down here, you can see that it's automatically chunked this content for us and created all of the appropriate fields that we need so that we're actually able to, well, search through this. Okay, cool. So now we have the knowledge base created. And now the next step is to actually use the knowledge base to generate some kind of query. Now, in order to do that, we just need to run a more advanced query on this knowledge base where we pass it some kind of string and then we can calculate the relevance and the distance to that string by using the embeddings. So I just pasted in a string here and you can see it says select asterisks from the environment knowledge base where the content is equal to what is staging and the relevance is greater than or equal to 0.6. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna rank essentially all of the results that are in the database and give it some kind of relevance score based on the content that we've provided. So in this case, we've just uh, done a simple filter where we're saying, okay, we only wanna take the things that are more than 60% relevant, right? Or 0.6 relevance. So if I run this here, actually, I should just highlight this. So you can see here now, if I bring this up, it shows me the query that was ran, and then it gives me the chunk ID and the chunk content. In this case, the staging takes place late in the software development life cycle, blah, blah, blah. And obviously that's relevant. And if we keep scrolling, we can see the distance and the relevance of the results that were pulled up. Okay, cool. So that's that. I just wanted to show you a simple example here of working with some unstructured data. So again, all from this one tool, we're able to pull stuff in from the web, kind of create a knowledge base around it, and then start querying the knowledge base to get information. Next step, I'm going to set up a structured database using a Postgres SQL connection. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to combine those two sources together into an AI agent that can give us some more accurate replies. So let's make a new file here and let's go with this next kind of mini project. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is just connect to a sample data source here from MindsDB. This is one that they just provided for the tutorial, so you guys can use this one as well. Uh, and I'm just gonna run this, and then we should see that this database gets connected in the left-hand side. Okay, and you can see now that I called this data source and the data source is appearing here. And if we click into this, we can see all of the different tables that we have. Now for this specific video, I'm gonna use the engineering table that we have here. So let me find where that is. Okay, so actually I realized I was using the wrong schema here for this, so I just changed this to demo, and now we have the data set that I was looking for. So I have demo and then engineering data set, and if I look at the engineering data set, you can see that we have all these environments, so this is why I was pulling like staging information before, error rate, issue, impact to customers, data occurred, etc. So what I'm actually gonna do is I want to enrich this data a little bit before I start passing it to my LLM. So I'm gonna show you a way that we can do an enrichment where essentially for every single entry in our database, we can pass it to an LLM. We can get the LLM to generate some new data based on that data. And then we can kind of create this new knowledge base that we then provide to our agent. So let me show you how we do that. All right, so I already ran this just cause it will take a second to execute, but let me run you through what I did. So I said, create table files. So I'm going to store this in the file menu right here. I called this enriched issues. And then I'm selecting issue, environment, error rate, impact of customers and severity from the engineering data set. And I'm also creating a new entry here where I'm using this LLM call. 
So I'm saying LLM and then determine a possible fix for the issue. And then I'm passing the issue. So I'm kind of combining it using this pipe operator here and then as a possible fix. So what this is doing is like augmenting this data with this LLM generated data and then making a new table for me that has these fields plus this new field, which suggests a possible fix for this issue. So again, it will take a second to run. That's just because it does need to call the LLM for every single entry. And you can configure which LLM you're using for this particular call in the MindsDB settings. So if you go to settings here, you can adjust uh, which one, you can change the API keys, etc. In my case, I'm just using that default OpenAI one. All right, so the query is finished. If you go to files, you can see we have the enriched logs. And I just changed the name here to logs too, because that makes a little bit more sense. If you press on this, you're able to preview it here. And you can see we get the issue, environment, error rate, impact to customers, severity, possible fix, etc. Okay, and the possible fix is the new one that we generated here from the LLM. So the next step is to generate an agent that connects to this data as well as to the other data that we had, the stuff that we pulled from the website. So let me show you the syntax to do that. All right, so this is the syntax here. You're gonna go create agent, staging agent, using, and this is the name by the way, and then you provide the model information. So in this case, we have the provider, OpenAI, model name, GPD-40, pass the API key, of course, don't leak this like I am, I'll delete it later then pass your data. So in this case, we specify the knowledge bases, which is this, and the tables, which is this. And of course, we can include more data here if we want. And then we give a prompt template. Feel free to read it. I just told it, hey, you know, you're a highly skilled QA analyst, do blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we can run this, which I already did. And then you'll see that we get a new agent here called staging agent. So now if we wanna use the agent, we can make a query against the agent with some kind of question and we'll get a response. I'm also gonna show you something in the UI that makes it a bit easier to use the agent. So here's an example of how to do this. We can say select answer from our agent where the question is equal to this, right? And then if we highlight this and we run it, it will take a second and it should generate a response for us here. So let's give this a second and see what we get. Okay, and you can see here we get the response. The issue that impacts the most customers in the engineering data set is the data sync lag with a total of 844 impacted customers. Perfect. Okay, so that's how you do it from here, right? Like where we're in this kind of unified tab. But if you want, you can also go to the respond tab. You can just select your agent and then you can ask the same thing. So you can say what is the you know easiest issue to fix okay and then what you'll be able to see is the agent's thoughts as it runs th through this process as well so it's going to say like hey do i need to use a tool it's going to think through the process and then you can view kind of all of the stuff that's happening here and it gives us the response as the uh, easiest issue to fix based on the criteria of having low severity the lowest error rate and fewest impact to customers is the issue of api requests returning 500 errors and then it gives us the full thing and tells us what the possible fix is so this is the easy way to interact with the agent and then again you can choose the different agents here you know you can see all the information about them and then you can view the thoughts as you ask them this okay so that's it for using this in the ui however obviously if we make an agent we probably want to be able to connect to it like from our website or from our local computer so i'm going to show you a very simple python script that allows you to connect to these finished agents so that you can actually run them from your code Okay, so I'm not gonna write all the code from scratch, but you can see I just set up a very simple um, script here. I'm using the MindsDB SDK, which you can just install by doing like pip install MindsDB SDK. Then we just connect to this port where MindsDB Studio is running. We can get the project that we're in, which is MindsDB, and then we can just make a query. So for the query, we just write the same query that we wrote in the editor. So select answer from staging agent, where question is equal to, in this case, it's a variable that I'm passing in. And then I just set up a while loop. I say, okay, enter a question. And then what I do is I make the query string, pass it to the query or pass it to the project, sorry, fetch the result, and then just print out what the answer is. That's it, really straightforward. If I go here and I type uv run main.py, it should spin up and then I should be able to ask this something. So I'll say, what is the highest severity, severity issue I can fix now? And then boom, it should give us a reply. Okay, and then you can see it gives us the whole response here and says, you know, this is the issue related to API requests, blah, blah, blah. This is the impact of customers. This is how you fix it. And then what I'll do is just exit and get out of that. 
Okay, cool. So that's it. That is MindsDB. I hope you guys find some value here. I know that it's not 100% clear on what all the syntax does. Obviously, feel free to reference the documentation, but I think this is genuinely a pretty cool tool. It's very effective. It does what it promises. It's free and it's open source and you can run it locally. So I don't know what more you can ask for when it comes to building an AI agent very quickly. Big thanks to MindsDB for sponsoring the video and teaming up with me. And I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in another video.